Roll up, roll up for the final round of the ITU World Triathlon Series. Yes, we have the grand final for the elite men and women taking place in Lausanne, Switzerland this weekend. And here is what to expect. The WTS series consists of eight races, which started way back on the 8th of March in Abu Dhabi, has run all the way through the summer and will culminate with the grand final on the 1st of September in Lausanne, Switzerland. And it's all about the points. So for every race that an athlete does, they receive points with the winner at the WTS series races we've had so far, receiving 1,000 points. That then decreases by 7.5% for each place thereafter, down to the top 40. But when it comes to the actual grand final itself, it's 1,250 points up for grabs for the winner, and again decreasing by that same percentage, but this time it's the top 50 that are awarded points. And an athlete's final score comes from adding together their five best results from the initial seven events, plus their score from the grand final. So six scores added together will crown our world champion for 2019 in the WTS series. And coming into 2019, our defending champions were Mario Mola and Vicky Holland. But going into Lausanne, the well, series ranked leaders are Katie Zephyrs and Vincent Louis. So let's take a look at this course that the athletes are going to be battling over for the crown of world champion. Now it is held over what was actually the I2 World Cup that was in Lausanne last year with some ever slight changes to the run course. But the whole event is held over at the standard Olympic distance, so 1.5 kilometer swim, 40 kilometer bike, and a 10 kilometer run to finish. Yeah, that starts with a two lap swim in Lake Geneva, followed by a rather punchy looking bike course. It's gonna be seven laps of 5.7K each. And within that, there are two punchy climbs on every lap. So the first one is around 12% incline at about 500 meters long, followed by a pretty fast, sharp descent. But at the bottom of that, there's a sharp turn before the athletes head into another climb pretty soon after. This one, again, similar length, but around 10%. This has a slightly straighter, longer descent off it where you could see athletes reaching speeds of up to 70 kilometers per hour, and again, into a 90 degree bend at the bottom of that. And after that, there's a 2K that's fairly flat back to the start, and then they obviously repeat that six more times. Yeah, so after they've done those seven grueling laps with those 14 demanding climbs, the athletes head back into T2, dismount, and then they're gonna be heading out onto a four lap run course. Now, as we already mentioned, this is almost exactly the same course as was at the Lausanne World Cup last year, but the run course is slightly different. And what happens here is there's a small lap being added in around the port as they start their lap. They then do an out and back along the flat before returning back towards transition. But then the athletes have a slight initial climb that they have to run up. But before this street gets particularly street, thankfully for those athletes, they do their U-turn and they come back down, but this could be a decisive point on the run course, perhaps, and it could cause some splits. So after they've finished those four laps, athletes then come back down to the waterfront and finish um, in front of the Place de la Navigation. Oh, well pronounced, Fraser. Well, you can see it's a pretty exciting course, but I think it's time we took a look at who those contenders are likely to be. Starting with the women, obviously we need to start with the series leader, Katie Zafares. She's completed six out of the seven WTS events so far. She's won four of those. She's come second in one, and she did unfortunately crash in Hamburg, but she still managed to complete it and actually finished 35th there. Yeah, now last year she ended up in a really close battle for the series win with Vicky Holland from Great Britain. Now on the day there in the Gold Coast, it ended up being Vicky out sprinting Katie, coming second behind Ashley Gentle on the day with Katie ending up in third. And that meant that she ended up second overall in the series behind Vicky, just a scant 53 points behind overall. Well, this year she's certainly got more of a lead. She's 755 points ahead of her closest rival, Jess Learmonth, heading into this event. So she has to be a force to be reckoned with. That said though, she did have a nasty crash at the Tokyo test event a few weeks ago where she ended up with stitches in her mouth so it's gonna be very interesting to see what form she's come back to. So now moving on to Jess Learmonth. Now although she finished fifth in the WTS series last year she has actually finished on the podium four out of the five times that she's competed in the WTS series this year. So she really is a force to be reckoned with and she's very well known for attacking the swim and having a real strength there but she's become quite a force to be reckoned with on the bike as well and she can really look to get a small group away, attack that bike, and hopefully then work with that smaller group to extend that lead further on the bike. Yeah, but she's obviously gonna be keeping an eye on Katie Zafaris, who isn't quite such a strong swimmer, but I think Jess is gonna be needing to make a serious push on the bike if she's gonna drop Katie before it comes to the run section. 
So while we're talking about Jess, it would be remiss of us not to mention a few other notable British names. First of those being Georgia Taylor Brown, because she sits third in the current standings. Georgia won the Leeds WTS event back in June, I think it was. And well, if we haven't all heard about the Tokyo Test event by now, then you might well have been under a rock. Yeah, and then there's Non Stanford. She's currently ranked fifth, but she is the ITU world champion from 2013. And of course, Vicky Holland, currently 12th on the standings, but she's the defending champion. And we've seen her coming into recent form with that third place finish at the Tokyo Test event. But aside from the Brits, there is another dominant nation inside that top 10 in the rankings, and we can't forget the team from the US because we have Taylor Spivey, who sits fourth in the rankings. We have Summer Rappaport, who is there in sixth, and both of those are extremely strong swim bikers, very much with the potential to follow that early pace that Jess will perhaps set and join that select group of front girls that will include Katie Zavares likely and possibly help her on her way to becoming world champion. Well, another athlete to watch out for, Cassandra Beaugrand from France, maybe not going to mix things up with the overall standings she's currently ranked ninth but she can certainly mix up the race itself as we've seen when she unleashes that impressive run that happened in Hamburg last year when she finished at first on her first WTS win and repeated that this year with a second place so she could be one to really mix up the actual race on the day now another couple of athletes who won't be affecting the series rankings but could certainly have an impact on how the race unfolds are Flora Duffy and Nicola Spirig now neither really need any introduction whatsoever Flora was the 2016 and 20 I2 world champion. She carried that dominating form into the 2018 season as well. She won the Bermuda and Yokohama events, but then was struck with a really debilitating foot injury, which essentially plagued her ever since. It's been a long road to recovery for Flora, but with her just winning the Tokyo Olympic test event recently, it would seem that she's coming back into form. And with this bike course in Lausanne suiting her race attacking characteristics, who knows? Well, another athlete who's known for her prowess on the bike is Nicola. And she's been absent, but for slightly different reason she gave birth to her third child in April but she is going to be one to watch I mean she is the Olympic champion from 2012 then silver medalist from 2016 she's six-time European champion and she won the World Cup that was held in Lausanne on a very similar course last year add all of that together she's racing on home soil so she's bound to be in the mix and really changing things as the race goes on on to the men, and it's Vance St. Louis, who's going to be starting as number one with the overall series leader going into this event. He's also won the grand final race itself the last two years, so that's going to be making him surely the hot favourite. It was last year at the grand final in the Gold Coast where he really broke things up on the run. After several surges, he managed to outrun Mario Mola, won that race, but did actually settle for second in the overall series. Yeah, he's had an incredibly consistent season so far. He's placed in the top five out of the six WTS events that he's raced in, including winning in Yokohama earlier in the season. In fact, he goes to Lausanne with the luxury of knowing that he actually only has to finish in the top five to be crowned the IT world champion. Of course, that's providing that Mario Mola doesn't get his way and Vincent Louis drops out of the top five. Mario is the defending champion going into this race and he's currently second on the overall standings, 397 points behind Vincent Louis. Yeah, now Mario doesn't have the swimming prowess that Vincent Louis does, but if he comes off the bike with the leaders, he is always dangerous and he has a real habit of charging through fields with record run splits. In fact, at Abu Dhabi at the start of this year, he ran an incredible 14 minutes flat 5K to take the victory there. After a short hiatus from the WTS series in 2018, Javier Gomez is back. He's the five-time ITU world champion and he's currently sitting in third on the standings. Yeah, now he has placed top 10 in five out of the six races that he has raced this year, including podiums in both Bermuda and in Leeds. And Javi is just incredibly well known for his consistency across the three disciplines. So given the nature of this course in Lausanne, I do think that that will play into his strengths. And then we have the winner from Leeds and Hamburg WTS series, Jacob Burtwistle. Now he's from a running background, 11 times Australian champion in middle to long distance running races, but moved to triathlon at the age of 17. And it's his run that really does shake things up and it was a one second victory over Van St. Louis in Hamburg. Yeah, now Jacob sits fifth in the current series rankings. He's 925 points behind Vincent Louis in the overall series. So although the world title is probably out of reach and unlikely for him, if he has a great race this weekend, we could definitely see him creeping onto that podium. And let's not forget the Norwegians either. Gustav Eden might only be ranked 14th on the standings at the moment, but he did win this race when it was last year at a World Cup in Lausanne, and that was with an incredible 
incredible run, clocking 30 minutes and 12 seconds. This year, he's finished third in Bermuda, and it was last year that he was also on the podium, joined by his teammates, Christian Blumenfeld and Kasper Stornes. Yeah, now, Christian and Kasper, well, by their own high standards, haven't had as good a season as they would have wanted, but you can never discount the Norwegians, and who knows what they're gonna have up their sleeves. And if they work together like they did in that famous one, two, three in Bermuda last year, then who knows what we're gonna see from them. And then we have a number of other athletes that could influence this race or even win this race. That's the exciting thing about ITU racing, anything can happen. There's Martin Van Riel, who's currently ranked sixth, finished on the podium recently at Edmonton and is bronze medalist from European Championships last year. And he's known for being really strong on the bike, so could be looking to mix things up with this technical course that we've got here on Nissan. Yeah, and Hayden Wild from New Zealand is another young and exciting athlete that we just can't overlook. He's currently ranked ninth, but he's had a number of top five and top tens since the latter end of the season and certainly seems to be coming into some good form. He was third in the Tokyo Test event, for example. And indeed, the winner of that Tokyo Test event, Tyler Mislachuk from Canada, he's currently ranked 12th, but equally he also is obviously coming into some rather good form because that performance in Tokyo was very impressive indeed. Well, talking of late form, and it's an athlete that we would usually have been mentioning far mm -hmm. sooner in our look ahead, is Johnny Brownlee. And he's obviously been a little bit out of form, but coming back now, he's just had a win at Edmonton, finished fifth at the Tokyo Test test event and he's not going to be able to mix up anything with the standings but will certainly be one looking for the win in the race. Now, one final athlete from the same nation that we're going to be keeping our eye on is Alex Yi. Now, this is his first senior season racing at the WTS level, so we maybe are a bit unfair to predict him winning at the grand final quite yet, but he's without doubt one of the fastest athletes in the field. He gave Mario Mola an absolute run for his money at the start of the season in Abu Dhabi, so we will definitely be keeping a keen eye on him. Yeah, so there you have it. That is a rundown of the series, the course, and more importantly, the athletes that are going to be lining up at the start line this weekend in Lausanne. We would love to know who you think is going to win the race, so do let us know your predictions in the comments section below. And Fraser, before we go, I think we need to put our money on it. Where is your money for we do, Heather, the so win? I'm gonna go this for is for the, the actual race win. Yeah, race win, so I'm going to go for a 3 P at the grand final for Vincent Louis, and home favourite in the girls, I'm going to nudge uh, Nicholas Berg. Okay, I'm going for a slightly more wild cards in some way, but not in their previous um, results. I'm going to go for Johnny Brownlee to win the men's. I think he's coming back into form. Mm. And Flora Duffy, just because the bike course, I think it's really going to suit her. So yeah, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. Hit the globe to subscribe to make sure you get all of our videos. And if you want to see a video that I've done on some DIY physio hacks, you can find that one just down here. And if you want to see a video about Ask GTA Anything swim related, well, that's just down here.